and welcome to Season 2, Episode 5 of OSW Playlist! With your boy, Jay Hunter, and Season 2 is where you gaze upon my glorious visage! Yeah, okay, I'll oh, stop hot dogging and grandstanding. What am I talking about? That's all I do. Hot dogging and grandstanding. Now, you wonder why am I in this jacket? Ha ha, two reasons I tell you. One is kayfabe, so the zombies can't bite me quite as easy. And number two, in shoot, this is actually my jacket, so this is what I go around wearing while I'm in Dublin. So if you are in Dublin and you see that someone that kind of looks like me, uh, yeah, run up to me and say hello. And there you go. Resident Evil 2 Remake. Haha, <laughs> wasn't going to make you look at me in a coat for the rest of the review. So you can look upon my waistcoat. Anyway, just wanted to say Resident Evil is my third favourite franchise in video games, below Legend of Zelda and Mario, and Resident Evil 2 is my fourth favourite entry into the series. So it goes Resident Evil Remake, Resident Evil 4, Resident Evil 1, Resident Evil 2. So when this remake was announced, my cap was at the ceiling! We do it! The 1998 survival horror game gets a complete overhaul in this 2019 remake. Directed by Kazunori Kadoi, who's been with Capcom working on Resident Evil aka Biohazard games since the 90s, and produced by Yoshiaki Hirobayashi, or H, which is one third the amount of H's as Triple H. In case you've never played one before, in general, what is Resident Evil? A third-person action horror shooter. Creep around an opulent mansion or stand-in, like a fancy train carriage or cruise liner or police station, which opens out to an industrial factory or sewers and eventually an umbrella lab, unveil a big conspiracy, fight some mutated human-ish monsters, and finally, someone hits the self-destruct sequence, so it's a mad dash, boss battle and escape. Before we start, I want to do a quickie retrospective on what happened before, as it explains why Resident Evil 2 is how it is. I said 2002's Resi Remake was my favourite entry. It's a GameCube reimagining of the 1996 original, keeping the fixed camera angles but having new gorgeous dynamic lighting and all these bells and whistles. Oh my god, it's beautiful and horrifying, highly regarded, arguably the greatest gaming remake of all time. Despite the accolades and me buying it three times, it didn't sell well. One in the third million sold on the GameCube. Later that year, they brought out the uninspired Resident Evil Zero, which sold less, and Capcom said, ah, that's it for remakes for a bit. Why am I telling you all this? Because if those two sold well, then Resident Evil 2 would have been remade in a similar fashion, with fixed camera angles, more faithful to the original. Instead, director Shinji Mikami went straight into working on Resident Evil 4 and never looked back. So this 2005 rebirth with Resi 4, that was the sweet spot of action horror. From there, Capcom went further and further into guns blazing Hollywood action, bang bang parting, with less and less on horror. And with that, they got their two best selling titles, Resi 5, 12 million, and Resi 6, 10 million, despite being received much poorer by fans. Since then, they've reeled it in and gone more back to their roots. Slow, tense exploration and backtracking with the Resi Revelations offshoots, 2017's Resident Evil 7, and now again in 2019 with Resident Evil 2 Remake. So this is a delicate balancing act. How do you make a game that's reverential to the original, but also fresh and engaging for longtime fans, but also broad enough to appeal to a wide audience? Let's find out. Original Game Design Like the original, Resi 2 had fixed camera angles and sluggish tank controls, both a concession of the PS1 hardware limitations, but also an ingenious solution to strip the user of safety. It's like running in water. You can't turn and dodge easily. Corridors are tight and claustrophobic, with limited ammunition and resources, so every bullet counts. Each encounter is weighed up to run away or engage. This is survival horror. As you can see, the backgrounds were a static PNG image, miniature works of art, the camera specifically placed to show or hide exactly what the designers wanted you to see or not see. You can't move the camera, so you don't know what's hiding in the room. And it also hid the dodgy looking zombies a little. It's the best 
It's not a bug, it's a feature workaround. This is like Jaws not showing up for most of the film because it looks shit. They need a time to work on it, but not seeing it built up so much anticipation and dread. You're gonna need a bigger boat. The evolution of Resident Evil. Since 2005's Resi 4, almost all of the games have removed the fixed camera angles to the now iconic free view over the shoulder camera. This gives you way more visibility. Great, but less places for zombies to hide. So as a gameplay consequence, enemies come from any direction, which means you need greater control, so your character is more nimble. And if they're coming from anywhere, aiming needs to be improved too, so you get a laser sight or crosshairs and shoot where you want. So hang on, you see better, you move faster, you shoot more accurately. How did Capcom even the difficulty? They kept throwing more enemies, faster enemies at you. Now you're a wrecking machine that mows down literally hundreds of undead monsters. Resident Evil had become an action game in a horror setting. It was no longer survival horror, it was action horror. So in an effort to reach as many people as possible, Resident Evil had lost its essence. However, Resident Evil 2 Remake wants it all. The modern fluid control, but also the classic intimate survival horror. How do you do that? Claustrophobic hallways, scarce ammunition, much less zombies, but they take anywhere from three to 11 headshots to take out. These unstoppable tanks with inconsistent health, that is terrifying. Capcom have cracked it. Instead of getting a new GameCube-esque Resi remake, which to be fair, would be clunky by modern standards, we get something that plays like Resi 4 and Resi 7, but set in and feels like Resi 2. These design choices ripple out to the entire game. Like the soundtrack is not a soundtrack, it's an ambient soundscape. Because thanks to greater camera control, zombies can come from any direction, so you need to listen to audio cues, which means music takes a back seat to atmosphere and mood. It makes logical sense, but it also sucks, since Resident Evil is known for its wonderful music. Gone are memorable tracks like the police station front hall, Ada's theme, the second malformation of G, and the save room. Actually, let's take snippets of the original of each of those, followed by the remake. Lower it. That save room is really the only part of the game where you have a reprieve, no attacks there so you don't need to listen to audio cues, so they're able to push the boat out a bit. That and the 90s credits song, which doesn't really count, the game's finished, you know? Besides which, you don't want to compare to the best, most badass end credits song in history. Hey, it's up to us to take out Umbrella. Hey. It's up to us to take out Umbrella. So having a soundscape and no real OST sucks, but it makes logical sense with the design. You can switch to the old OST, but it doesn't really work. 
Gone are the loading screens between doors too. Don't need them. You can load large areas on the fly. Which means changing rooms is no longer enough to get a reprieve. You can't get away from the zombies now because they follow you through the door. Thankfully, no Crimson Head zombies a la Resi Remake. You don't need to burn regular zombies bodies. Thank God. Director Kodoi wanted a photorealistic look, so Leon's big shoulder pads are out with a more modest look. Claire's too cool for a red cutoff, very sad about that. Same fate with Ada. PS1 era red dress looks great, but in a photorealistic world, the spy gets her uh, Inspector Gadget on, wearing a trench coat. Even the giant alligator, okay that was quite goofy, so in a dark and gritty world, it's just lip service, getting relegated to a quick, almost quick time event. Chew on that, you overgrown son of a bitch. Fantastic! So that's why Resident Evil 2 is how it is. Now I want to take you through my thoughts during playthrough. Kick off with a new tutorial section. You skip on second playthrough. The brand of Leon's jacket is Severn. Dan Severn, of course. We're gonna be okay. He pulls into a gas station called Ms. Oil. Oh, I came to play. Much like the zombie FMV reveal in Resi 1, you get one here, showing off the grotesque zombie with the new Ori engine, debuted with Resi 7. Look at you, you're so pretty! Snarling, slobbering, dead-eyed grimace, it's glorious! Get out of my dreams and onto my hard drive! Big bang of Walking Dead with the intro quick cuts of a devastated city, also Leon's Arclay Sheriff outfit, it totally Rick Grimes. Raccoon City used to be a quaint sleepy town enclosed by mountains and trees, now it's misty Montreal. Seriously, big bustling skyscraper metropolitan city now. Just on seeing old places, this game isn't just competing with its past, it's competing with our memory of the past, our nostalgia on how we think we remember things, cause PS1 era, don't cut yourself on those polygons mate. Back in the day, our minds really filled in the gaps, and now, here's this room, how you remember it? Uh Better than you remember it. More fully realised and hauntingly atmospheric. I got chills seeing the front hall again. It's all amazing. I just have three little quibbles. The first look of the station, they missed the trick by not having a beautifully reorchestrated sting of the old song. There's no zombies, so like, do it. Here's the original first the remake. And here's what it sounds if I put Blake's synthetic orchestra onto it. Hello? Yeah? Yeah. But the sting hits eventually if you put on the old soundtrack, but it's not nearly as good. Turning the corner in the reception and seeing that window where the liquor crawled past 21 years ago? Oh shit! What was that? In the remake, they build up the reveal, which isn't as iconic as that FMV, but hey. The only other omission that I noticed was seeing the open night sky when you first see the train. In the original, the camera angle's eye lines lead you to see the sky. Lovely, exhaling, hopeful moment. And in the remake, it's indoors and it's a bit of, hmm, how about that? And off you go, hmm. Uh, these are nitpicks though. The remake has lavish attention to it and little nods as well. All over the place. Oh my god. I love that the bullpen still has the Welcome Leon banner, which is misspelled. In the original, there are two L's, but in this one, someone's noticed the second L, taken it down and put it on a desk. Oh, brilliant. Just while we're marking out over the incredible graphics engine here, just a small thing, I adore the new high depth of field object cutaways, like opening a locked door with a key. So friggin' cool. 
The only caveat is when you're trying to sneak around the liquor and the kayfabe of it, of you just rattling the door and jangling your keys. Come on, it's like, shut up! <laughs> Character wise, you either play as rookie cop Leon S. Kennedy on his first day on the job, or college student Claire Redfield looking for her brother Chris. Each has their side character plot too, and play as them for a short while. With Leon, it's double cross super spy Ada with her side scan, boo. But Claire, she befriends little Sherry Birkin, the daughter of evil scientist William Birkin. She gets kidnapped by Police Chief Irons, and you get to play as her for a bit. My god, I love this. This was terrifying. I was shocked to hear this little sequence wasn't in the beta. It was made sometime between that and the actual release. Did a great job of showcasing how scary, how intimidating this must be for a child alone against an abuser. Show yourself! I know you're in here. The longer it takes me to find you, the worse it's gonna be. There's a bit of Resi 7 hide and seek, which was white knuckles terrifying. And the last mad dash, if you put a foot wrong, he catches you, which really stung. Had to do that a few times. Way better than pushing boxes in the original. What about the voice acting? Classic Resi, very campy schlock horror. Uh, cue Jill Sandwich. That was too close. You were almost a Jill Sandwich. <laughs> You're right. And cue Marv. Sorry, but it looks like your party has been cancelled. Obviously someone taught you well. Yeah. I know how to take care of myself. The voice acting and motion capture in 2019 are excellent, but jarring as a general storyline is still a bit over the top bollocks. Like Sherry's story, her ma's like, oh no, you're infected, oh no time, gotta let you die. Uh, wait, Claire saves her? Actually, there's a cure right over there. Are you fucking kidding me? Sherry straight up asks Claire, why do you care? And she's like, eh, because I do. <laughs> I didn't feel much chemistry between Leon and Ada either. It's like Star Wars Episode 2, Anakin and Padme. But at least those two had the excuse of one of them is this chastity space monk and the woman was queen at nine years old. So they're both weirdos, you know. Uh, sexy spy and heartthrob cop have no excuse. I said cop. Throbbing cop. <laughs> I don't like sand. It's coarse and... Rough and irritating, and it gets everywhere. Okay, let's talk about the bodies. Let's talk about Mr. X. I have very opposing feelings about this, very bivalent feelings, because I have my, when I play through it, how I felt, and afterwards, and on second playthrough, how I felt when I was a bit stronger. So initially, he comes down, and he's like, rah, 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 and you have to run away. But you're actually running to a save room, and you hide there for minutes on end, waiting for him to fuck off. And I'm like, I want to play the game. But, yeah, but this is is the game. This is what the game wants you to feel. You are running and hiding. You can't fight this guy. See, the problem is, is there, there is a bit of rubber banding where he's never too far away from you, kind of teleports closer to you. And there's some other instances where, okay, he's on the ground floor, I'm on the first floor, I'm hiding behind a pillar, and he'll see me, and then the music starts coming on, and you're like, okay, it's a great, mu great musical piece, but fuck off, mate, you did not see me, mate. Also, the internet has made me love him. There's uh, a meme going around with uh, Mr. X, he's coming to get you. Uh, X Gonguity is playing and you whip out your rocket launcher and he just turns and tails and runs like a bitch. It's amazing. It's like, X gon' give it to you. He gon' give it to you. X going to leave it at reception for you to get at a later date. Bosses in general aren't the game's strong point, usually a pulsating mutated tall bloke. You spend a lot of it circling around a table or a train carriage, running away and potshotting, but that's not this remake's fault. It's 
how Resident Evil 2 is. I adored some of the quieter touches in the game, like with scientist William Birkin, this hulking, writhing, genetic mass of destruction barreling towards you, and he shoots, kill me, or Sherry, his daughter, or get out of here. Oh my god, like, so these are faint glimpses of humanity, lucidness, makes this story so much more tragic. Here's a cool backstory too. Birkin was murdered for trying to give the virus he created, the G-Virus, to the, to the US government instead of his boss's at Umbrella. I was like, G is my creation. Yeah, on company time, mate. More time. <laughs> Regular enemies wise, zombies. As you've seen, the zombies are gorgeously grotesque, disgustingly beautiful. Check out the yaw on this lad. <laughs> Only Quibble wouldn't mind a few new animated faces. Fat bloke zombie, he crops up a fair few times. But none more so than Japanese janitor zombie. Dude got around. Look at this, what's happening mate? However, I pop seeing the tank top female zombie get her own corner in the new one. So here's her in the old one. And here's her in the new one, yeah! Glad to see the Majora's Mask salesman found a job in Raccoon City. Liquors look phenomenal. Buff, blind little tanks that crawl around the ceiling and the floor. Taut little anus as well. You're on edge, deftly pushing the analog stick as tinily as possible, tiptoeing around them to not get too close and avoiding fighting them. Freaking incredible. This is distilled Resident Evil. Dreading an encounter, holding your breath and hoping you won't be snuffed out. It's what horror dreams are made of. Sad bananas, they've done away with the spiders and the sewers, oh well. And now we have more regenerator looking vine tentacle zombies, as opposed to the ridiculous spitting triffids from the original. Aww. It's a bit spooty, isn't it? The dogs return, but they move very janky, almost buggy-like quickness. I was wondering, is there something wrong with the game here? Claire's like, hey Leon, you're looking well. Leon's like, eh well, dogs have been chasing me. Chris Redfield. Increasing action formula. As an overall arc, Resident Evil 2 follows the formula of starting off scared and powerless, growing and getting stronger, and fully maturing as a badass and overcoming your fears. So as the game progresses, you get more powerful weapons and mow down previously daunting threats, as you get stronger and face your fear head on. The tone goes from claustrophobic horror to action, and we see this shift in the scenery as well. We go from intimate tight corridors of the police station to the larger sewers inhabited by sludgy mini Birkins, or Merkins, <laughs> to the big cafeterias of Umbrella's lab, each place sadly getting less memorable and more open areas for you to fight waves of opponents in a gauntlet to the finish. So to me, the settings got less interesting as you progressed, like I'll never forget the iconic police station. The map is burned into my head. Uh, I could take and leave the sewer. And the Umbrella Lab, meh. It's like straight out of Capcom's product number 03. Yeah. That said, even though Umbrella's Lab, I just shit on it for being sterile and boring. There's two bits I absolutely adored. Look at these red lights. Mm, they're so gorgeous. And look at this, the self-destruct core when you're descending down the lift. Yes. <laughs> it's a bit Yorkshire, isn't it? Mad dash to the finish of our review. Here's my quick fire thoughts, feelings, observations, and improvements before we wrap up. Darkness. The game's overly dark. It took me a bit to fine tune the brightness. I know darkness equals scary, but dude, come on. Also, it's gorgeous. I want to see it. It's still terrifying. I spent a lot of time looking at the map and in my inventory, so much so that I ended up screen grabbing the maps and putting it on my tablet and kept that beside me. So this game would be much better on the Switch or the Wii U with a second screen. Little overlap. It seems that Claire A, Leon B is how it happens, but sadly they didn't overlap much at all. It feels like maybe it'd be too long technically to pull it off. If you notice, like even the characters don't even take off their jackets on screen, but between scenes, so they don't have to animate taking off your jacket. 
it's like Claire was there half an hour before Leon, which makes it a bit super sad when you fight the same bosses, like William Birkin. Think of it from his perspective. I just got bitch slapped by Claire. Leon's coming down. It's like, all right, I got to pull myself up by my bootstraps. I can do this. Oh my god, my god, my god, my god, my god. <laughs> no? Jobbed again! Huh. That was easy. Main characters are glammed up. Leon is a hulking brown haired lad, much different than Ginger Neo of the original. Even the live action Romero trailer actors aren't as pretty. And they're from Hollywood! <laughs> oh, there's a bit where Marv's like, oh, here's a knife. Now shake my bloody hand. Uh, no. <laughs> Did you know Resident Evil 2 uses Resi 7's graphics engine and even steals a few art assets from the game, like the full-size attic mannequin from Resident Evil 7. That's the desk mannequin in Resident Evil 2. And the quarter past ten clock from Resi 7. It's now a handless grandfather clock. Hmm... The puzzles are pretty rudimentary, but I enjoyed the backtracking. I know the maps really well now. Also, there's a new weapons cache and a find the keypad fetch quest. On the ground, hands behind your head. You can't be serious. On the ground, now. Gotta mention it, I love the corrupt police chief iron storyline. <laughs> Police Chief Brian Irons, he's in the pocket of evil scientist Birkin and kept the lid on the mansion outbreak and how the virus leaked into the city, into the water supply. So Claire and Leon roll into town unaware. He ordered his policemen to break up the weapons cache to all around the precinct so they'd be helpless when they were overrun by zombies. Kayfabe explaining why there's guns in so many different places. Publicly a philanthropist. Privately, a murderer and taxidermist. Police Chief Irons, he's entrusted to keep safe the mayor's daughter, Catherine Warren. Instead, he murders her during the outbreak and is interrupted trying to embalm her because he's got to stuff her. I would have loved to hear more about Irons and his atrocities, like he's killed at least eight blonde women, with Catherine being the last. Actually, the DLC Ghost Survivors... It's a set of quickie games set in an alternate history where some victims survived. Most are fast, but the mayor's daughter is one of them. You get to play as her, where she's able to overcome Police Chief Irons, trek through the precinct so she can reunite and escape with her lover, the reporter in the jail cell. It's lovely, not canon. She really died. Not really, though. <laughs> what else is on DLC? The Hunk mission as the fourth survivor. Tofu survivor. Baka Survivor. No, that one doesn't exist. Uh, different outfits like the noir costumes. I really like that. There's a funky filter over the top as well. Claire's Elsa Walker costume. Elsa being in the cancelled Resi 2 game. Resi 1.5. You can look up about that. On PC, there's tons of mods. Of course, Claire Nude is there. It's like a nude raider, but for Claire. Claire Raider. <laughs> but the funniest one for me is Mr. X as Thomas the Tank Engine. Splicey! Overall, as an old school Resi fan, fixed versus over the shoulder camera angle, is this better than the original? God help me, this is better. I didn't say I love you more, I said that this was a better game. Capcom made the right choice, this exceeds what I wanted. I love fixed camera janky controls, but this is the best of both worlds. Capcom had a hell of a tough task on their hands, the franchise is 23 years old. You want to please the hardcore fans that'll buy everything, but are also the most critical, but also make it broad enough that the casuals will buy it. And they've succeeded in both, already over 4.5 million sold and ranking 9 plus in the reviews. This is a relentlessly oppressive, beautifully grotesque reimagining of the original. A wondrous marriage to its classic and modern resi. This is full chub. Go buy it, play it, all of it. Just before we finish, I want to thank Steve Yurko for his amazing artwork, the Resi 2. He actually asked you, how do you spell that? Is it O-R-E-S-I? Oh, Resi 2, that's what we'll call it. Oh, just, oh, thank you, mate. And also to Mono Memory, let us use a couple of tracks uh, that you heard earlier on in the episode. Oh, 
he's amazing. He does synth wave video game music, mostly Resident Evil and also some other games. And it's like, oh my god, can you see this? Uh, I got this. Oh, come on. Yeah, Mono Memory remixed the save rooms. Yeah, this is like a compilation of uh, Synthwave Resident Evil covers that he does. He's brilliant. Uh, go check him out. Um, I'll link all of his stuff in the description below. So, Conquer, play us in. So, that does it for this edition of osw playlist season 2 episode 5 resident evil 2 remake i hope you enjoyed it if you have played the game i'd love to know your thoughts on it and also uh, what you thought of this episode a bit of a longer one hopefully woo, hopefully you enjoyed the shafting uh i should be just locked up okay um next up we have a couple of horror reviews i went to the ifi horathon which is a horror film festival in dublin in ireland at the end of october uh, those should be coming out soon there's a cm punk movie there's there's a Malcolm in the Middle movie, uh, what else have we got, uh, there's a Korean movie, uh, all different types and uh, a lot of people, you know, burning cats, so it's like, man, is V1 involved in this? <laughs> anyway, uh, so that's J Hunter giving you a course clear on Season 2 Episode 5 of OSW Playlist, and remember, a winner is you. Stars!